Okay, I'd like to talk to you today about the energy stored in an inductor. Um, let me convince you first of all, or try to convince you, that there is energy stored in an inductor. Um, and so let's look at this circuit right here. This is a, kind of a weird circuit. It's got a battery, um, a resistor, and an inductor. That's our symbol for inductance, or an inductor. And um, it's got two switches, S1 and S2. And we're going to start out with S1 open, excuse me, S2. We're going to close S2 and leave S, sorry. We're going to close S1 and leave S2 open. So this one will be closed, and this one's going to be left open. Now, um, what happens is when you do that, um, when there was, the right before you close this, there was no flux in here. But as soon as you close it, the flux starts to build in here. And this is going to, um, try and fight that flux by it will induce in itself a voltage pointing this way to try and stop the flux from changing. So it's going to act like a battery. And the, the battery's EMF of this is going to be, if you remember from the last video, it's going to be negative L D I D T. Um, so because of that, um, we, we're we going to have a, a, a EMF pushing back the other way. Now it's not going to be able to stop that, stop the current from going into it. And in the end, there'll be current in here. So once this is closed for a long time, there'll be current in here and it will no longer be changing and this will be okay with it then. So it will fight it at the beginning, but after a while, it will be okay with the current because the, it, it at least the current is no longer changing. At least the flux is no longer changing. So now it's 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 um, not going to do. The EMF will go to zero. So in other words, if the if the current isn't changing with time, once you reach some steady state, there is no EMF here. It's, in fact, this behaves just like a long wire, which is what it is. It's a long curled up piece of wire. Okay. So, um, but as soon as I do that, then after this is this is all okay with the current, I'm going to open this switch and I'm going to close this switch. Now, if I open that one and I close this one, you might think, well, there's going to be no current flowing because there's no battery in that. What would, what would cause the current to flow? But see, here's the thing. If current's in here and it starts to die out, the flux is changing in here again. There's magnetic field that's disappearing if the eye around here disappears, so does the field inside, and so does the flux. And so it's going to try and stop that from happening. And this time it's going to um, put a, a, an EMF that way, and the current will go around like this. Okay. Now that means that that inductor had some energy, because it must have had some energy, because it's pushing current around the circuit. So... We say that that inductor has energy, and I want to derive for you what just what the equation is for energy that's stored in an inductor. We say it's stored in the magnetic field in the inductor. Okay, so um, incidentally, the negative sign tells us that that would push that way because um, as the as the current starts to die out when you open this switch and close this one, the current will start to die out, which means that di dt is negative, and that being negative, along with that negative, makes the EMF positive to the right. Okay, um, so that said, let's see if we can derive what the, what, the, what the energy is that's stored in an inductor. Okay, so we have um, the power that's used by an inductor is going to be I times V um, PIV except I'm going to do I times E but it's it's the current times the voltage across the inductor the current through the inductor times the voltage across the inductor okay well um, that's equal to I times now the voltage across an inductor is equal to L D I D T so power for an inductor is I times L di dt, because this is, this is the EMF. I'm going to leave off the negative sign there. Okay, so um, 
And that's going to be equal to, if you remember, our formula for power is also the rate at which energy changes with time. So the rate at which energy changes one form to another with time is power. Okay, so um, I have um, a dt on both sides. And so I'm going to say that um, this must also be true. And now I'm going to integrate. I'm going to go from, I'm going to find out how much energy we get when we um, go from um, I equals zero to I equals some final state. We'll say, um, we'll say I final or just I some other time, some other current I. Okay, so let's, um, this integral is going to just go to delta E, the total change in energy. So this will be the, the total change in energy when I sum up all the little changes in energy. And this is going to go to, I'm taking the integral with respect to I. I could pull the L out, I suppose. And I'm going to get, when I take the integral, it's going to be one half I squared. And I'm going from zero to I. So that means that the energy stored in an inductor, it's really, poten we think of it as potential energy, is going to be, when I put these in, it's going to be equal to one half L I squared. Okay, so um, I'm going to write that a slightly different way. I'm going to tell you that the energy stored in an inductor then is going to be equal to the energy stored in an inductor. So I'll call that U because it is a kind of a potential energy um, in the L is for the inductor. So U sub L is equal to one half L I squared. Now I'll tell you how I, mem how I remember this. I know that the, um, the energy stored in an inductor is kind of like kinetic energy for mechanics. So kinetic energy for mechanics um, kinetic energy, we'll call that K, is one half M times V squared. And if you remember, um, the M, the, the inertial mass, is, a, is analogous to the electrical sluggishness or the electrical inertia, which is inductance. And the V is the same thing as I. So if you remember, like in mechanics, we said F equals MA where m was dv dt and um, in for inductors we say that the emf is equal to l di dt so you see how i is equivalent to v or not equivalent but i is analogous to v and the m is analogous to l Okay, so when, whenever I'm trying to remember this equation, I, I think of this equation, one half mv squared, and then I convert it into my head to, okay, oh, that must be one half li squared. And there's a lot of other equations you can do the same thing with as long as you know the analogs. So um, what we're saying then is if you have, um, let's say that we have a solenoid where L is equal to, say, um, four Henry's, and let's say the current in it at a given time is, um, let's say, 2 amps, then how much energy will be stored in it? The total energy that will be stored in the inductor is 1 half L times I squared. So that would be 4 amps squared. Or excuse me, 4 amps, the, just, the quantity, this, just the unit amps squared. I squared the two amps array. And so that, that's going to give me eight joules. And maybe we'll leave it for another time to show you how that goes to joules. Because Henry's can be broken down and so can, so can amps. Okay, that's the energy stored in an inductor. So the energy stored in an inductor is one half L I squared. Thank you. Bye.